feel like the core mission of graffiti art, like the hieroglyphics, is to document the times and lay out the truth for truth seekers to find in our near future. The core mission of street art, in my opinion, is to educate and inspire. We're inviting people into our world, so we're like journalists in a way. I became a graffiti artist. Um, grew up around my best friend who's a natural born artist and he's done illustrations straight out of his head. Um, my grandfather used to give us homework to do and when we would finish real fast, I would copy out of the comic strips and always had an ability to look at something and be able to copy it. But it just felt like I was always looking at somebody's artwork to get an idea. I was predisposed to it. You hear people say they're born into a lifestyle. Um, that was definitely predetermined. I had inspiration all around me, whether it was artwork that was done by family members directly or uh, friends of the family. There was always those uh, reinforcing inspirational things around. So I knew I wanted to do that was so impressed by my best friend, Damon, who was able to do these characters out of his head that I just simply said, you know what? I can do that too. But I wanted to hit it from a different angle. So I got put on to graffiti art just from looking at guys that I was around at the neighborhood house in Orchard Park who were doing like other people's names. When I think of Lady Pink, she had one of the illest tags that I had ever seen. And I, I remember being younger, trying to copy it and emulate it because it just had a flow and a finesse to it. And, and that, was a, the, that was a woman holding it down, you know? It was my middle school teacher by the name of Miss Harris who for a graduation gift gave me a book titled Aerosol Art. Looking at aerosol art, that was my exposure to graffiti around the world. A lot of writers don't refer to street art as graffiti. Some writers prefer to refer to it as aerosol art or aerosol culture or just writing or writers because that's what they, that's what we are, we're writers. The spray can or the ability to execute anything in graffiti, that's our passport. So if I have a style that speaks true to where I'm from, it almost represents for the city. Alphabet's pretty universal wherever you go, but I feel like the community of artists take pride in crafting an alphabet for hip hop. Street art influences popular culture because all of the cool stuff is created by kids hip-hop culture or street art as an element of hip-hop culture is sort of genius. It's, the, I would say, the best way to showcase your work or your art and effectively have it be seen by as many people as possible and devise a way to put that artwork on the side of a subway train is genius. Graffiti art gifted popular culture through influence, having people observe and see things on a large scale. It's not a trendy kind of thing. We weren't, we weren't doing this for hits on YouTube or, or views or likes. We were doing it because it was in our heart to do. If it's real and it's true, and it's from the heart, then it's gonna resonate with others. That's what this culture is at its core. It's that, that realness, the truth. Hip hop created a space for graffiti culture to exist on the strength of there being elements or disciplines in the culture. They may take the word that a DJ scratches 
and illustrated in a piece. There might be an interpretation that the b-boys are having their dance moves that they would freeze in a b-boy character that would be next to their piece. All of the disciplines influence each other in a way. What griots to these moments and, and times that we can document and leave it all on the wall for people to observe. Part of my contribution to this project, I'm doing a series of illustrations and they're done in sort of like a collage type of style uh, that's sort of like a reflection of the art that I'm recognized for. Basquiat, obviously, Ram LZ, Lady Pink, and Futura. When I hear people refer to Pro Black as an upcoming artist, that's just crazy to me because he's been around for so long. He's been doing what he's been doing for years. He's many things, but up and coming is not one of them. What having the support of the MFA does for me personally as an artist, it helps me experience another level of freedom in my creativity. That type of support where artists are host, um, showcased, and put in something that's very established with history, the ability to add on to it helps me go a lot harder to preserve what's happening at the time, to take that responsibility of being able to pass down information to the next generation that I've visually documented. To my knowledge, this is the first time that uh, the MFA itself has offered a residency to local artists. I am a graduate of the School of the Museum of Fine Arts. So imagine what a big deal that is for me to uh, work in partnership with a cultural institution has always been a resource for me on this level for something of this magnitude. It's a cosign, and it's a real good cosign to what's possible and the delivery of what's possible in the content of information when you have an uh, institution as large as such. It's a real good platform to stand on to deliver the message. I can't think of a better way to gain the support of your community than to open your doors and make them feel, make us feel like we belong there, like we are a part of that, because we are. We've made the streets our galleries, and now we're taking it from the block and bringing it indoors. We're showcasing what we do, so the ability to have this uh, collaboration with a guy that I looked up to coming up in the game, is beyond extravagant. A boom boom tick tick a boom tick 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 rob 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 tick tick a boom tick a boom boom tick tick a boom tick a boom boom tick tick a boom tick. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is about that time. How's everyone feeling? I really appreciate everybody coming in on their week off from school. Today's agenda is called Breathe Life Into Existence. I'm going to walk you through the process as if I was doing a piece on the wall, okay? When we're doing pieces generally, there is the outline or the sketch, there's the fill-in, right? And then from the fill-in, we re-outline it, giving it definition. We do tricks, force fields, 3Ds, bubbles, anything that you can think of in a graffiti writer's repertoire. I'm standing in front of you because I have this opportunity, and it's an amazing opportunity. They say the picture's worth a thousand words. We just gotta choose which thousand words are gonna, you know, implement to that picture. Most of the time, for anyone in here that's, uh, that creates, you know that the story comes up while you're painting it. It was an indinker word that means we must go back to reclaim our past so we can move forward. I wanna show y'all murals that helped me identify this thing that I was super interested in. This is a portrait of Frederick Douglass. The title of the piece, 
I just learned the title, actually. It's called Knowledge is Power. And it was Dana Chandler's way of telling kids to stay in school. As you can see, there's some real traditional shots of Malcolm X when he was, you know, Detroit Red. There we go. You can see, like, just kind of the correspondence in the, in the suits and things that were in Dudley. I started to have a better understanding in doing letter styles, techniques, being able to look at an artist's mark and determine, determine like, oh, that's what they were saying, that's their name. That's me being little, reading into this and just knowing that everything that was about this particular artist, Mattapan is where he's from. Now, I used to go to this wall all the time, but without him knowing, I knew this part was always black. I knew these parts was black too, so I get a can of black and I touch it up. Just because I don't know when he's ever gonna come back, but I know it's always gotta look right when I go and see it. If I told y'all that this was over the click piece that had the bars and the syringe and the handcuffs, would you believe me? No. There's a way to transition compositions with things that we're influenced by that we wanted to put in context. So in the spirit of Sankofa, looking back on your past to be able to step into your future and give something due to the things that, you know, you came up on, you learned, your upbringing, everything that was influenced by me, I felt like I needed to pour into this one piece. If you're gonna feed the public this idea of graffiti, sometimes you gotta sneak the pill inside the applesauce. I know it's gonna be something that's hard to digest, but understand that I'm not standing on a particular soapbox and with the fist up. I'm just letting you know what I've been influenced by and the reflections of myself and the work that I've seen coming up, as I've shown you, has influenced what I write, how I deliver it, and what way that I go. Now, this is a brief life continuation where all the ingredients from the first mural is in this particular situation. I want to try and um, end this session with some ingredients for y'all to do some research on so that when we get together and brainstorm, we can come with some, we can come with some ideas. Your principal, the city, and the museum approved of the concept being pushed forward, okay, okay, okay. which is dope. Yeah. All right. So I wanted to share with y'all first is just kind of like how the other murals came about and just show you previous sketches so that you can get an idea on where my delivery is going to go with the whole Breathe Life 2. So here it is, part one. You seen what it was like in reference to a rough presentation. This is part three. All right. So here was the first drive. And so now I'm coming up with the third concept. You've seen the little boy by himself. Now you see his sister, him and his sister. Now he's his sister by himself. Another thing I like is like, you really telling the story through your first one, second one, third one. So when people like see that now, they see, oh, that's a whole scenery. That's a whole thing that's happening. It's like you're writing a, it's like you're writing a book just for pictures. <laughs> I like, I like. Graphic novel. <laughs> Like you're displaying your discography. Mm. This is the first album, second album, third album. There it is, man. Yeah. There it is. And that's that's kind of crazy. I could play around with nuances and craziness from the notes that you shared with me in, in reference to the artists that you found. I wanted to take it to a whole nother place to honor what everybody sat back and took the time to discover. The celebration of uh, femininity and things of that nature. Stuff that's going to help her pop out from a distance that won't be like, you know, cliche colors. Yeah. I wanted to concentrate on the girl having what would be her solo on the wall. It's me paying a tribute to a tribe called Quest once again. Q-Tip has a lyric in the song from Check Around, and it says, if knowledge is the key, then show me the lot, right? And so naturally she's at a school. If you put a keyhole in it, she's unlocking some type of knowledge. I wanted to present to you the framework. The help I needed was the detail to the framework. And it's gonna come from a few conversations, all right? So 
This is what got approved. Congratulations on getting this far in the process because that's the hardest part of creating, y'all. It's just the, the presentation, telling the story, and having others to believe so that we can deliver something that will contribute to the city's landscape with murals while adding on to the series. All right? That's it. This image, this high contrast uh, image, um, that stuck out in my mind. So that kind of carried through. That that survived <laughs> the, the how do you say in film the, the the editing process, the chopping the floor or whatever. My background as a comic book artist sometimes. Um, a newer generation of comic book artists may pay homage to an artist from like a bygone era by doing sort of like a throwback version of a popular comic book cover um, from back in the day, but with a new spin. So I was sort of in that frame of mind where I wanted to, to really show how much they meant to me. So I made it personal. Part of my creative process, like before I begin any project, comics, uh, graphic design, advertising, whatever it is, I always get a brand new sketchbook. And this is sort of like a throwback, you know, to the black books, graffiti, you know, it's just, just hip hop to me. Compiling the visual elements um, was pretty easy. All I had to do was go back into my mental Rolodex. I was a student of all of these artists when I was younger, being you know, completely captivated and consumed by hip hop culture. I, uh, I also traveled back and forth to New York. I had relatives that lived out there. So I really look forward to riding the subway trains, visiting my sister in Queens, you know, and seeing all the rooftop graffiti. It was like, those were like art galleries to me. But I didn't really know what, um, we didn't really have anything, or I didn't have anything to connect it to. It was just a symbol of New York. When the cultures evolved and was introduced to the world and myself, the way that it was, I was like, okay, that's what all that was about. And I was all in from jump. These were uh, some of the first images that came to mind when I was composing the Basquiat uh, homage or tribute. Um, to me, I feel like that mane of hair is iconic. So even if you're not familiar with who he is, you see that hair and you know you've seen that person somewhere before. Uh, for me, the choice is Basquiat was obvious. Um, uh, Rem LZ was a big influence on me when I was younger. Um, Lady Pink will always, for me, be the kid in the movie that changed my life. Um, and Lee Canonez, same thing. So it was, it was something like that, you know, um, what they mean to the world and their, their contributions, but also um, making it personal. One of these, I think it was this one, might have been um, a good example of that, just having a, a concept like a burst and wanting to get that information down. Um, just so I could refer to it later before, and I didn't want a chance losing it. So that came from that. And then just little notes to myself, just like any artist's sketchbook. Same thing with Futura. When I learned about the exhibit, um, it seemed like it was tailor-made for somebody like me. 
and I had ideas before they actually really materialized into anything. So um, when you have um, that's really bringing attention, um, uh, long overdue attention to these pioneering artists, then um, my immediate or my initial thought was, how could I honor them? Um, to make it personal, I wasn't concerned that it would go over people's heads. Um, if anything, I thought that there was enough information there where um, it would invite the viewer to take a closer look. And if there was anything there that they didn't quite understand, then again, the hope is that it inspires them to go digging on their own, you know, to go search out these artists on their own if they're unfamiliar. Rizzy Riz. What's up, brother? How you feeling, bro? All right. All right. Long time no see. Yes, sir. How's it going? All right. It's great. Let's see. Okay. Wow. What was the most surprising thing um, about this whole journey and the residency for you? It's interesting that you said journey because at the beginning of this, we all know what it's like to get something started. And then we also know the accomplishment. If anyone would have told us what this journey consists of, the challenges, the unforeseen, and the resilience that's gonna come from it, I would have never believed. I felt a strong sense of freedom because now it's our voices that I have the responsibility on delivering. And I think the client work was the preparation. But the residency is ours, exactly because if it's gonna make an imprint for the rest of our lives, then I need to give it the time it deserves. And that's what came from this whole experience. There were, we, 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 we've created a dream team. And for everything that came from those experiences, I was like, I can't shortchange that. The same way I would break my neck to deliver for a client to make sure that we can confirm that we are able to do this I had to go a step further into what could possibly be history. Nobody knows they're gonna yeah. do that. And I, I, wanna, I wanna add something though. Mm -hmm. um, team, that's, that's, that's so significant because, I mean, we really created a solid team. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's just like that shared vision. So many elements of this were just like organic, man. It was almost seamless to the point I know for me, and you can tell me if it's like this for you, where it it uh, it, it, it's, it seems so comfortable at, at times, where you were almost waiting for something to go wrong. How many times does that happen where you have free reign to, to execute something in your vision and have everybody kind of jump on board with it? That, that doesn't happen every day. It doesn't happen every day. Nah. Not at all. And it was such an ability to highlight our strengths that we were able to feed each other like a team. Where like, you know, I may have taken the ball from the other end of the court, hit you with the assist, like a no-look pass. You bounce it back up and I'm tapping my knees and slam dunking it. Like this was all magic, man. And, and the magic that we've witnessed in, in, our, in our upbringing, when it came down to just what happened in the moment, this time gave us that ability to make that happen. And it's significant because this is home. Mm -hmm. This is our community and what we're doing directly impacts uh, everybody along the perimeter. You know, they can come in here and you talk about firsts, you know, not bad to be the first, right? Right? No. So, so I think that added more significance for sure for me. And I know you feel the same way. Yeah. What would you say about the residency was more helpful or useful to your craft? Do you? Well, touching on it again, um, I think the visibility 
and this being a home base, this has a direct connection to the surrounding area and community. So I, th I think the impact um, is more genuine. You know, you feel it instantly. Um, this, you have an immediate response and reaction. When you're up there on that lift and all those people that come by and, and, and just dig you up and, and, you know, and hang out and, and just how personable you are and social you are anyway, I mean, that just adds another element to it, that gratification and knowing that what you're doing, people are feeling and it's resonating with them and you get that immediate feedback. I don't think I could experience that in any other situation other than this. Well, I feel like the direction that we're heading on is so right and it's such a good feeling that I wanna keep going in that direction to continue this narrative where we brought a practice of what happens in this museum and we took it to the street and we're leading people from the communities, not the other way around. The other way around. Yeah. This, is, this is what we brought outside of here. Right. And this is such a spot to, to, to coin as headquarters that like we can come back to it and that attraction, the noise that we made from the outside, we can filter it to come in and appreciate what's to come. It's like this was our coming out party. It was. <laughs> Even though we've been here for forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's, it's a great way to kind of show people what we've been doing in the dojo, yeah. you know? It's like, again, we know this guy has been doing these things, but here's what it was, here's where it existed, this is where it's at. And the community of young people that we're connecting to, is it's purpose-filled, yeah. especially with the location. So. I think I, I want to try and develop like, um, cause you can't pick a mural up and bring it everywhere. But because of because of social media, we can we can we can throw it out there, and people will be attracted to it. But I think it has a different type of impact when somebody goes there and experiences it. You're like, wow, it's a, it's a world of that nature. And so, and it, if I can add, I think it it makes you rethink mm -hmm. how. Um, you know, and play around with different aspects of presentation. You know what I mean? Glad so, you said that. And that speaks to exactly to what you just said. So the level of presentation is to not downsize, but to take a piece of it and turn it into studio work. So I, I feel like with the rest of uh, our residency here at the museum, I'm gonna create a, a nice little body of work that will be uh, an, and not even an asterisk, but like a punctuation at the end of this this journey. Mm -hmm. And that, that that's an important element too, because it's not like this residency was all we were doing, but to have an institution like this, it makes it real and official for so many people that really don't know or don't understand our worlds. Oh yeah, we're myth busting, and this is journey enhancement. Yes, sir. Sprinkle a little bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel so protective over this thing um, of ours because we're the first. So um, that the next uh, artist or artists should be given that same opportunity and that same platform to experience it uh, in that way where it's, it's for them where they feel like it is it is crafted for them. They feel just as comfortable in this space as we came to feel mm -hmm. in this space. Um, because I deserve to be here. How do you feel? You deserve to be here, right? I've, I've learned that I deserve yeah. to be here. So I feel like the next artist or artist deserve that feeling too because it's gonna, it's gonna be uh, twofold, you know? The artist is gonna benefit, and so is the museum. Right. I just hope it's two ladies coming up that are gonna that hold it down. Dope. That would be dope. Just to, just to, just on the strength of like, you know, um, for everybody we've influenced. Yeah. And 
I'll be selfish for a second. The way that I'm raising my daughter, if, if, if she could see what her dad started, but then see herself benefit from an, an opportunity, it's not just like only guys can do this, right. but this was for the ladies as well, to have that voice, to have that, that ability to, 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 to hear yeah. and see that reflection, that would be amazing. Yeah. Beautifully said, beautifully stated. And, um, you know, just like with comic books, I talk to young people about doing this work. And um, a lot of young kids, they look like you and I. They don't know that they have opportunities out there. They don't know that certain paths uh, can be for them if they pursue them. Sometimes they need that shove or that push. And it's, it's guys like you and me, and there are others. We're not the only ones. But, but guys like you and me, you know, it's, it's like we intuitively take that responsibility upon ourselves to show them that there are these paths that they can pursue. And you, there is a place for you here. There is a seat at the table for you and they need to know that. And when they know that, that, that gives them the armor that they need to, to, to go into any battle. Mm -hmm. Well said, brother. Yeah, man. Ultimate performance of chivalry. We're holding open the door. Huh?